good grilled cheese sandwich. Okay, so recently somebody was asking me about my favorite accessories and they were asking me about my favorite accessories for my Leica M2 and I thought about doing a video just for that, just for the M2. Then I thought, oh yeah, I should also make a video for the F3 or the Olympus OM4 or my Leica R3. For the most part, it was going to be five different videos of, for the most part, the same accessories. So we're just going to combine them into one video and we will speak specifically about uh, dedicated accessories just for the F3 or just for the Leica, etc. Um, as we get to them. So the first thing that I must have on any camera, the Peak Design cuff strap. I have never been a fan of traditional neck straps, never have been. And these are just perfect to fit my wrist. They're perfect just uh, for the look of the camera as well, as well as they easily detach for in the event of me actually wanting to use it with my black rapid strap, for instance, and not have to have something dangling off it. They've just got these little, I call them the dongles, but they're the officially the mini connectors from Peak Design. And they just clip on and off as needed. And they just make it just perfect for me for using. I really like them. I can't speak enough of them. I have the black ones. I have the ash one just like this. They're fantastic. So I really like having that. Second thing that is a must have for me with any camera is better grip. Uh, I'm a big guy, I have big paws. So adding the grip, like on the Leica M2 here, uh, this is the actual Leica accessory part. It's just a really nice hold for me. It just makes the camera just hold just that much better and it's just easier to grip. Whether I'm using this or whether I'm using a leather half case, the effect is the same, especially for this one. This is the Mr. Zoo leather half case. I really like his products. This is not the first product from him I own. It will not be the last. I really like the quality of his work. The leather is fantastic. The stitching, uh, absolutely beautiful. It's perfect. I've never had a problem with any of the halves half cases of his that I have owned. Um, it's nice and soft on the inside, protects the camera. On the Leica M version here, it actually adds a little bump in the leather here for finger grip on the front and same with the back, a, a thumb hold one. Uh, the reason why I do not always use this one, uh, it's a pain for the Leica uh, to switch films because you're going in through the bottom on other cameras that you can just pop open and you know pop the back it's not as bad um, a nice thing about this like a grip for instance is that it also centers the tripod socket again so very rarely do I use like on a tripod but I like being able to use this on my black rapid and that mounts it in the middle where it's nice and balanced versus off to the side where it actually connects on my Olympus, I have the, the optional grip one accessory. And again, it just adds just something a little meatier for this camera uh, for me to hold on to. I've got big paws, like I mentioned, so it's just nicer to have something that just gives it that little bit of a, a grip. With the Nikon F3, for instance, I've got the motor drive on it currently. I do not always shoot it with the motor drive, but when I do, it's, it's brilliant to have that extra bit of a grip. Uh, complaint about the Nikon F3 motor drive. Again, the tripod socket is not centered and therefore it looks weird on the tripod or unbalanced when you're carrying it on a rapid strap. They do have an accessory. Uh, this is the Nikon AH3 and it does exactly that. It mounts onto the... Uh, bottom of the motor drive here and then it centers the tripod socket again and they thought of that already back in 
the 70s. Another must have for me, for all my cameras, you'll see that it's on all three of these, the soft shutters. Uh, it just adds a little bit bigger of a surface area for the shutter release than what the shutter release by itself normally does. Uh, but it, because of its convex design, it, uh, it allows you to have, no matter where your finger is, you're able to trigger the shutter. I get these off eBay for in a 10 pack for about $2 a piece. And I do it that way because they pop off every now and then and you'll get home and you're like, oh, where'd my soft shutter go? Oh, I lost another one. I've slowed that down by adding a little drop of thread lock onto the soft shutter just as I screw it in. And that has slowed down the fact that I can't take this one off right now, not without at least a pair of pliers to break that seal. So I've started doing that and hopefully that will mean I don't lose as many. But when I do, they're fairly inexpensive. Like I said, about $2 a piece. Perfect. Uh, viewfinder magnifiers on both my Nikon F3 and my Leica, I have the magnifiers. So I have the Leica 1.25 on the Leica M2 here. I've got the DK17M. Uh, DK17 is the viewfinder piece for the Nikon F3, F4, F5, F6, F100, um, F90, all of those higher end cameras that use that bigger uh, viewfinder piece. M4 magnifier. And it just, unscrews out. It's just a really thick viewfinder eyepiece. It's got the soft rubber on it so it doesn't scratch glasses or anything like that. And I really like this. This thing makes the difference on the F3 HP that using the non HP viewfinder and then switching up to the HP viewfinder does for you. So again, even with the HP viewfinder, it just makes it that much bigger and it's just a really nice accessory to have on the camera it doesn't add too much size uh, especially when you put the eye cup around it you barely even notice it there but it just makes all the difference in the world for seeing the viewfinder for me another thing with the f3 here is i have an optional screen. This is the Nikon H2. I really like this screen. The entire thing is a micro prism, unlike your traditional uh, split prism, where you have the, the two semicircle halves that you have to line up, and then it's got the little area around it. That's micro prism that helps you focus as well. Edge to edge, this entire screen is a micro prism, and that really makes a difference for me because it allows me to focus super quick. I call it the anti-focus peaking screen because as you focus, whatever is not in focus kind of shimmers. And then when you nail your focus, all of a sudden that thing is crystal clear. And this is the H2. They also make an H1, an H3, and an H4. Uh, they're all designed for specific focal lengths. This one is designed between like the 85 and 200 mil range uh, because for the most part, the F3 I'm using with portraiture and I do use a 50 on it from time to time, but uh, the 50 doesn't seem to be too bad off with this H2 screen, but I'm going to be either using the 85 that I have on it now or my 105, my 135, my 180 and it just, it's perfect. Whatever is in focus is clear. Whatever is not in focus kind of shimmers. Absolutely love it. Uh, one of the best accessories out there for me. Uh, hoods on most of my lenses. The hood for this one's downstairs in the uh, bag right now. Uh, another thing that I do, I make sure all of my cameras have the hot shoe cover in them. Uh, so whether it's, you know, the one that the camera would have come with, or for the most part, 
I have a supply of these Nikon ones that I've bought and I will modify them as needed as in the case with this Leica M2 where I've had to take a file and just file off a corner and also in put in a little notch in for the top because there's a pin at the very front of the uh, hot shoe up here or cold shoe for this one and it just allows it to protect that area the either the electrical contacts I just like having it but also because I'm carrying most of these cameras on a black rapid quite often if you bump into something you can actually bend the the shoe and therefore it doesn't you know accept a flash or something like that down the road and you have to bend it back it takes a little bit of effort just easily mitigate that by just inserting one of these easy peasy um, as you'll see on the oops on the olympus here i have a yellow filter uh with uh my black and white photography, I love either having a yellow filter or an orange filter. It just adds a little bit of extra contrast, nicer skin tones, etc. Uh, there must have accessory for me for pretty much every lens that I own, every size of filter range. The other thing that I absolutely must have, neutral densities. Sometimes you're loaded with something like 800 speed film or 1600 speed film, 3200 speed film. Having a neutral density on a super bright sunny day allows you to go down to a more hand holdable speed while still being able to maintain um, shallow depth of field. Uh, with my film canister that I carry with me, I have marked all my films with a piece of white electrical tape. And I do this for one reason, one reason only. Not all of my cameras will rewind the film all the way into the canister. So I mark my films that are just straight out of box with a piece of electrical tape. And then that way, if the camera doesn't always rewind it all the way in, it leaves the leader out. I know it's been used by if there's no electrical tape on it. I will also mark what type of film is uh, that that is attached to. So P400, Portra 400, for instance, here. And I will attach that piece of electrical tape to either the back of the camera or the bottom of the camera, uh, depending on the camera, um, once I load it into the film or once I loaded the film into the camera. That way I know exactly what film is in that camera because it may be a week or so before I pick that camera up again after I've taken a few shots, etc. And it's always nice to have a, a little reminder that this is loaded with R25 black and white or Rolly 25. And I specifically will say black and white on any of the black and white films just because it allows me to uh, have a reference of what filters I will be able to use with it if I uh, forget that R25 is, you know, I, I also have some Kodak Ektar 25. So if I just see, oh, 25 speed, it could be color, could be black and white. So that way for the black and white ones, I specify black and white. Um, and that lives in my bag at all times. I think that covers it for about the usual accessories that I carry with me wherever I'm going. There are other accessories that I, I use for various cameras, stuff like that, but I think that about covers it for today. So hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a like, subscribe, find the Archer reference. Have a good day.